Hi guys, it's Tom here. I uh, just want to start a new series that I like to call uh, Getting Into Netrunner. Basically, I'm going to go through a couple of the key things you need to know when you're getting into Netrunner. I'm going to assume that you guys already know how to play, uh, at least on the basic level. If you don't, I definitely recommend checking out the Fantasy Flight tutorial on Netrunner. Uh, I'll link that somewhere. The Fantasy Flight tutorial is really good at getting to know the basics. But I will cover some more advanced things or maybe some things that people aren't sure of uh, later down on the track. So the first thing that I want to discuss is deck building. Uh, you know, you've got your core set, you've played with the basic decks that come in there, but you want to customise your game and personalise them. So how do you go about that? And what type of rules are involved? If you look at the identities from the core set, the runner ones and the corp ones, they all have some numbers in the bottom right. They all say 45, 15. The top number is your minimum deck size. Obviously you can have more, but that's the minimum. You probably want to stick to that if you're the runner. And below that is a number 15, and that's your influence. Influence is how you buy cards from other factions. It's how you play Magnum Opus with your Criminal Law. How you play Scorched Earth in your NVN deck. Unlike Magic, which puts constraints on your mana base, or Game of Thrones, which has you pay more for characters that are out of house, or other games which flat out do not allow you to play, don't allow you to play other houses, or other colours, or other clans. With Netrunner, you can. So most cards have an influence cost. So this is in the usually the bottom, or the bottom right hand corner of a card, depending on what it is. And that basically says how much influence that costs you. Now, anything that is not within your faction costs you influence to put in your deck. For instance, going back to Magnum Opus in Gabe, if you wanted to have one copy of Magnum Opus, it costs you two influence. And if you wanted a full set of three, it costs you six influence. Playing the card itself has no additional cost. It's just a deck building rule. You cannot have more than your influence amount in your deck. And like I said before, that only applies to out of faction cards. You'll notice that all neutral cards don't have an influence cost. So you've got your core set there and you want to improve on the basic runner decks that are in there. Um, and you want to put some out of faction cards in. What do you really want to go for? Well, the best idea is to help kind of round out your identity. For instance, if you look at the base set Gabriel deck, he has no code gate breakers, except for Crypsis or the Femme Fatale. What you can do is take the Gordian Blades from your Shaper deck, put them in there, and they cost three influence apiece. The other influence that you've got in there can be used on any amount of things. Maker's Eyes or Parasites, whatever floats your boat. Corporations work a bit differently because they have agendas. With each corporation deck you make, Depending on the size of the deck, depends on how many agendas you have to have in there. Now, it's not a number of agendas, it's actually based off of how many points there were. So a corporation deck that's between 45 and 49 cards must have 20 to 21 points worth of agendas in it. So if you had a lot of low point agendas, things like posted bounties and hostile takeovers, you're going to have to have a lot more agendas in the deck than someone who has a lot of priority requisitions and things like that. Because of this, a lot of corporation decks prefer to be 49 cards, because that means you have the same amount of agendas as a 45 card deck would, but it has less agenda density. Your agendas are much further between, and ideally you don't want to be seeing a lot of agendas, and you don't want your opponent to be seeing a lot of agendas. Other than that, corporations work the exact same way when it comes to influence, if you did want to improve on the base corporation decks, same thing, you probably just want to round them out. Uh, maybe include a couple of pet cards if you like. Traps, put a lot of traps in. If you prefer economy, put some more economy in. See how you go. Um, try a lot of things out and uh, learn what you like to play. That's the basics of deck building. Um, maybe later on I'll get into a bit more advanced things, choosing themes, um, what's popular in the meta. Uh, but at the moment that should get you started and at least get you testing things out with your core set. Uh, that's it for the first part of getting into Netrunner. Have a good one.